Hey, it's Owen Big Len. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Time for another one of my case studies. And unfortunately, this one doesn't have a happy ending. Um, this one is uh, unfortunately going to end in a, in a fairly hideous loss for this seller. And uh, it's kind of a bit of a comedy of errors that these people have uh, done here. But I like to post these blogs every now and again, these case studies, the good ones and the bad ones. On this one, hopefully you can learn from it and avoid all these things that this person did at all costs unless you want to lose a whole pile of dough. So here's the situation. First off, I should put a disclaimer out here right now that if you buy a detached home in the lower mainland, especially in Vancouver and Richmond, and hang on to it for at least a reasonable amount of time, it's pretty difficult to lose money. Um, I'm going to go on the record. It's very, very difficult to lose money buying a detached home in Vancouver or Richmond, um, unless you're buying it and trying to flip it the next day or something. Um, if you give it a little time, it's, it's virtually impossible. Uh, property values on detached homes in the short term can go up and down. But like I've always said, uh, real estate, if you give it enough time, is forgiving. No matter how much the market drops after you buy it, if you give it some runway, in my opinion, 8 to 10 years minimum, you're going to do fine. But this is a bit of a comedy of errors here for these people. They thought they were investors. Obviously, they just simply weren't getting the proper advice. Uh, I don't know who to put the blame on. It could have been the realtors. But I don't know that for certain because some people are very stubborn, uh, don't take the advice of experts or don't even uh, consult experts uh, on what they want to do and end up uh, uh, losing their shirt. So uh, this would never happen, I'm telling you right now, if it was one of my clients because I would never get them into this situation. I would have cut this off right at the beginning. But here's how it plays out here. Uh, this is a detached home in West Richmond, good neighborhood in Boyd Park. In uh, March 2011, uh, these people bought this detached home, Good Street, it's in a cul-de-sac, 3,000 square foot home on a nice lot, uh, it was listed for $1,058,000, it sold in four days for $1,027,000, plus they've got their property transfer tax on there, so let's call it an even, and their closing costs, let's call it for argument's sake, an even $1,050,000 they paid for this home. Uh, now, back in March 2011, I can tell you the market was good. It was hot. This home sold pretty quick, and uh, they had paid peak price. But hey, if somebody's got to pay peak price at, at some time, new market to, uh, highs are set all the time. In this case, yeah, they paid top of the market for it. Now, it's now on the market, I should point out. They're trying to sell it four years later. They've got it at a million fifty-eight thousand. So they're trying to get what they uh, paid for it. Now, uh, that's about what the market's done for detached homes. Actually, if they would have sold this a year ago, they probably would have listed this thing probably in the 950s. Market's been going back up finally after about two or three years of well, first going down a bit, then treading water. Now we're starting to see price increases again. But unfortunately for these people, uh, this wasn't uh, bought as a principal residence. Uh, they bought this home as a, an investment property. And the reason I know that is this house was sold in the neighborhood that I work. Uh, I saw it sold, I actually looked at the house when it was listed, uh, and like any good realtor who also invests in real estate, I go onto Craigslist all the time, once a month, at the beginning of the month, and I just have a look at what's available in the rental market, uh, and, uh, and what's out there as far as detached homes and condos. So this home was sold, and two weeks later, I saw it on Craigslist at the beginning of the month via a property management company that is based in Richmond that also puts these homes on uh, Craigslist as a rental. So it was offered up as a rental at uh, $23.95 per month, and shortly thereafter, I'm assuming, let's say they got their full rent for it, uh, it was rented uh, a couple of weeks later. So <clears throat> that is the first mistake they made on this house, and if I was their realtor, I would have told them right away, I would have got them a cocktail napkin and a pen and a calculator, and I would have told them that uh, buying a single family detached home like this is an investment property, isn't the best idea. And the simple reason is whenever you're buying a home as an investment property, whether it's a condo or a detached home or a stock, you want to know what your return on that is going to be. In real estate, it's called the capitalization rate, the cap rate. Very easy to come up with. You take what you're going to get, your NOI or your net operating income, so that's your rent every month, minus your expenses, Divide it by the purchase price, and that will give you your annualized rate of return, or your cap rate. So right from day one, uh, I would have told them if it was my clients, uh, why would you be renting a single-family detached home in Richmond 
uh, and trying to rent it out. You're going to pay a million fifty. You're going to get twenty three hundred dollars a month for rent. You're going to have to have some deductions there. In this case, it's five thousand dollars for property tax. Another twelve hundred dollars for Richmond metered water. Could be more. Uh, another thousand dollars, we'll say, for insurance. Um, another. Uh, Let's allow $1,500 for maintenance, which is pretty reasonable. Um, usually 1% to 2% you allow of the purchase price. So this is for things like fixing the roof, the toilet overflows, you've got to fix, uh, replace the hot water tank, the furnace goes, uh, just upkeep of the house. Now you could go several years where you don't spend much on a house and then all of a sudden the roof goes or you've got to replace some windows or a furnace and you're into it for five or $6,000. So I allowed $1,500 annually uh, for maintenance on the house, which is, I think, pretty conservative. And then you're looking at your uh, this home, like a lot of investment homes, was run by a property management company. They're going to generally charge anywhere between 6 8% uh, every month uh, to manage that property. Screen your tenants, get you a tenant, and uh, if the hot water tank breaks down in the middle of the night, they're going to call the property manager. So uh, you're probably looking at about $3,000 annually uh, for that property manager. Add it all up, it's about $12,000. Deduct that from the rent, which is $27,000. Leaves you with about $15,000, $15, which is your NOI, or your net operating income. You divide that by the purchase price, $1,050,000. Your cap rate is 1.5%. 1 1.5% is not going to do it for me. I don't care how much that home has got uh, potential for capital gain. Um, you're paying peak price. Uh, sure, the home will go up over time, but uh, we're not even taking into consideration any financing costs. I'm basing this off paying cash for the thing. So, uh, you know, your cap rate is dismal. Now, if someone came to me and said, oh, I want to buy a house and uh, I want to buy it as an investment property, I wouldn't be steering you towards Richmond and single family detached. What I'd suggest we do is there's all kinds of pockets in East Vancouver, uh, Fraser, uh, Hastings, Hastings Sunrise, uh, Main Street Corridor. Uh, at that time back in 2011, 850, 900, 950 could get you a 33 by 122, three bedroom up, a two bedroom and a one bedroom down. And uh, if you wanted to spend a little bit more money than that, maybe go up to 1112, we can get you a laneway house in the back. Now you've got four uh, rental properties on a 33 by 122 or larger, your cap rate is going to blow this out of the water. So that's the first mistake they made. Now again, I don't know who they were consulting on this, uh, but uh, they never should have gotten into this house in the beginning. It just wasn't a good investment rate from day one. So here's how it's playing out now. I can tell you this house now went on the market two months ago. Uh, it's listed at a million fifty-eight thousand. I can tell you that um, unfortunately for them, I'm sure they're holding out hope that they're going to be able to sell it for something like that. But I can tell you that the value of this house, if they could get nine fifty for it, they'd be doing well. The house needs a complete renovation. Uh, it's thirty years old. It's all original. Hundred thousand dollars to get a decent reno on it. One fifty if you want to do a nice job on it. Um, of course, when you have a house, 3,000 square foot house, it needs a full reno. Uh, you're not going to get top dollar for the house. You're limiting your, the demographic that's buying a house like that. Um, as I say, if they could get 950 for this house, they'd be doing fantastic. Uh, they just don't know it yet. They're holding out at this price, but they're not going to get it. So let's say they luck out. They get 950 for the home uh, after their real estate commissions of another $30,000. Um, these people are going to be looking at uh, a loss of anywhere between $125,000 to $150,000. So welcome to the investment, uh, real estate investment 101. So they've not only lost money uh, over the last four years uh, by holding the property as an investment property, and I should also point out that in that, uh, in that four years they've held it, I think they've had at least two if not three tenants, and I believe that house has been vacant in between the tenants several times. So they haven't been getting rent every month on it, and uh, the house has been vacant now for four months, on the market for two, but vacant two months prior to that. Uh, I think they had to do some painting and other things to get it at least in somewhat decent condition. The house was, I think, pretty rough after three sets of tenants. So they're going to lose an awful lot of money. Now, what can you take away from this? First off, if you're going to invest in a property, make sure you're buying the right property to begin with. This was doomed right from day one. Uh, the second thing is, again, if you're going to buy a home as an investment or a principal residence, especially if you're dropping a million dollars on it, with my clients, 
I tell them that you've got to have a long-term horizon. In the short term, you could buy this house today and it's going to drop 10% uh, next month uh, or a year from now. Uh, make sure you've got at least an eight to 10 year window. And if a client tells me, listen, you know, there is a chance that I may need to be a transfer to Toronto for my job. I tell them, do you have a backup plan? Let's say in five years, the market is horrible. Uh, prices are down, nothing's being uh, uh, bought. Um, are you able to maybe uh, keep the house, rent it, and then maybe move to Toronto and rent a place or buy a place if you can, or at least rent a place for a while until the market recovers here and we can list it and get you a good price for it. Uh, because again, real estate is forgiving if you give it long enough uh, time. So make sure you've got a backup plan. So I hope you can learn something from this. Uh, not the best situation, as I say, these people probably don't realize it quite yet because they haven't sold the house yet. But I think when they add all this up, uh, they're gonna take a, a pretty good haircut on this house, not to mention the four years that they've been holding it and losing money on it. Uh, just was not a good deal and never should have be gotten into uh, from the beginning. I'm Owen Bigland, that's all for now. I got houses to sell. See you next time.